Let's prepare our hearts and minds to go into the Word of God this morning. And as we prepare to engage the Word of God this first Sunday of the year 2021, Sunday, January 3rd, I want to go to a passage of Scripture in the book of Proverbs that I believe, based on how God has spoken to me, will set the tone for what the Lord wants to share with us at the opening part of this year. So let me read from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, then I'll pray and we'll jump into the message. Here is what verse 5 says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understandings. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Wherever you find yourself, I want you to turn to the person either next to you or yourself. And I want you to say this to yourself, as we go into 2021, I must learn to trust God. So we're going to begin this year talking about trusting God. And I think I'm going to be here for the month of January that God wants us to trust him. So let us pray and then we'll go into the message this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I stand to share your word, um, I empty myself. I am praying that you would speak through me to your people. I say this all the time, and I'll say it again at the onset of 2021. I have nothing to say unless you share. So Felix dies, and I invite you to take residence on the throne of my life. Speak through me to your people, God. So as we go through this year, as we hear the word this morning, we'll apply it to our hearts and be the people that you have called us to be. So bless have your way, speak so that someone would know you differently, someone would trust you differently. We give our hearts and our time to you, God. It is in your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. Now, a father and a son were out in the country climbing around on some cliffs. The father heard a voice from above him yell. Here's what it says. Hey, Dad, catch me. The father immediately turned around to see Zach, his son, joyfully jumping off a rock straight at him. Zach had jumped first, and then he said, hey, dad. The situation instantly became a circus act as the father did everything in his power to try to catch his son. Needless to say, they both fell to the ground, and when the dad finally composed himself, he found he could hardly talk. But once he found his voice, the father grasped in exasperation, Zach, can you give me some good reason, he said, why you did that? The son responded with remarkable calmness and clarity, sure, you're my dad. The, son reason, the son's reason for taking such a risk was based on the fact that his father was trustworthy. He felt he could live life to the limits because his father could be trusted. Now, as Christians, our relationship with God, whether we realize it or not, should be no different than the relationship that Zach had with his father. We can trust God simply because he is daddy. This means if we intend to have that father relationship that Zach had with his father, that we must live life with a certain comfort and assurance knowing that we can trust God. We ought to live life in such a way that we know that we can depend on God. And as we transition into the year 2021, one of the main lessons I believe God wants us to learn this morning, this first Sunday of the year, is that we need to know what it really means to trust God. I can say with a certain lens, sense of assurity that at the beginning of 2021, we had visions and we had dreams and we had aspirations. We had goals, but then disaster stepped in and we faced 21 with a disaster that disrupted a lot of our plans. It disrupted a lot of our dreams. It disrupted a lot of the things that we has planned. And for some of us, 
maybe because God was not at the forefront of our plans. Here's what we say about 2020. Um, that was the most disastrous year of our lifetime. We label it that way because of how it ended up. But as we begin our journey into 2021, God has impressed on my heart to say to the body of Christ at Restoration Christian Fellowship and abroad, that as we begin this journey into 2021, before we set too many lofty personal or organizational goals, let's spend time at the beginning of the year understanding what it truly means to trust God. The reason for this careful instruction is the pandemic might linger longer than any of us expect. And as a pandemic lingers, if our trust for God is not where it needs to be, we risk the possibility of leaning on our own understanding and we might become disillusioned with the way things are shaping up in the world. And a direct consequence of this disillusionment would be the possibility of the church missing the voice and or the move of God in this season. So then looking at the text that's confronting us today, Proverbs as a book is considered what biblical scholars call wisdom literature. The book itself is not intended or designed to be salvific in constant contents, meaning the book of Proverbs is not so much a book that teaches us how to be saved or communicates God's plan of salvation, but the book is designed and intended to teach us how to live life after we have been saved. Proverbs itself, it is filled with a lot of short calculated sayings that are specifically designed to aid people or aid you and I in our interpersonal relationships or interactions with each other. More importantly, the book contains instructions that prove particularly helpful to the believer in their walk with God. I hope you caught that. So Proverbs chapter 3, the text for us this morning, is one such chapter, and the contents of verses 5 and verse 6 is one such instance where life's lessons are being taught to the hearer by the author of the book. Now, as today's passage is explored, Here's what we find. We find Solomon, who is attributed with authorship for most of the book, he is addressing his son. Now, we're not sure which son Solomon is addressing, but he is addressing his son. And he is providing instructions on having a secure, personal relationship with God. Since Solomon's son had committed himself to his father's teaching, the father then now instructs the son to trust in the truest sense of the word, the covenant-keeping God of Israel. Now, considering Solomon's teaching to his son is only good to the extent that God is going to remain faithful to the world, the, his word, the son then is pressed to trust God at the level that the father trusted God. Now, as we look at this text, there are two important lessons that Solomon is teaching his son in the passage. And I believe those same two principles or lessons are transferable to you and I today as we enter the year 2021. Now, if we're going to succeed in 2021 as the people of God, the first lesson I would like to us to extract from this book is the truth that we must learn that trust the wisdom of God, not human ability. That's the first thing I want us to learn this morning, that if we're going to trust God, we need to learn to trust the wisdom of God, not human ability. Look with me. Look with me at verse 5. Let me read verse 5 of the text. Here's what verse 5 says. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own 
understanding. Very, very simple passage of scripture. Let me say it again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, it says in verse 5. And it says, and do not lean on your own understanding. Now, let me give you a little bit of information as we exegete this text or exposit this text and go in behind the scenes a little bit. That Hebrew word for trust used in the text is it's the most often used is the Hebrew or the, the Old Testament Hebrew word bata. And that verb and its derivative basically connotes a feeling, listen to this, of security, full confidence. Here's the English word, trust, right? Which often comes from a reliance on something or someone. The verb bata can be used with either a positive or a negative connotation. And where God is the object, right? Where God is the object of the trust, the verb appears more frequently whenever we see exhortations to trust God. So when someone speaks, trust God, trust God, trust God, and God himself is the object, that's where those words come in. So when the text is speaking to trust the Lord, it is speaking to the truth that we must have, listen to this, complete reliance on God for everything. So when we say trust in the Lord, here's what the text is saying about 2021. As we go into 2020, 2021, we must have now a complete reliance of God for every single thing, right? Now listen to this, trust in the Lord and how? With all your heart. Now, that's interesting because I want to talk about this. Let's look at what the text is saying about that. That word heart, right? That word heart in this context is translated from the Hebrew word leb. Now, listen to this, right? The word itself, when we talk about the heart, it speaks of one inner self. It speaks of the inclination of the person, their disposition, their determination, their courage, the heart, their will, the heart, their intention, the heart, their attention, their consideration, their reason, right? Listen to this. The heart then is the locus of a person's thoughts, meaning their minds, their volition, that means their emotion, and the knowledge of right or wrong, which speaks to their consciousness. So when we're talking about the heart, don't make the mistake of just thinking the little vessel on the inside that pumps blood. I'm speaking to the seat of the emotion of the individual, all of that, per, what the person is. Here's what we find in biblical passages, right? The heart was the center of not only the spiritual activities, but of all the operations of human life. So here's what we hear about the heart. The heart then is the home of the personal life. Hence, a person is dedicated according to his or her heart. So you'll find scripture that says the heart is deceitful. The heart can fool you. Once again, it's not talking about the vessel that pumps blood. It is talking about the seat of the conscience. We're talking about that thing that by default state within us can deceive us and fool us and we can be actually wicked. So listen to this. Considering the unworthiness of this thing we refer to as the heart, the conscience, the mind, the subconscious, the emotion. Here's what the text is saying. Trust in God. I'm going to flesh this out in a little while. Put full reliance on God with everything that we are. Okay, and I'm hoping you're seeing this when we're talking about trusting God so far because we need to trust the wisdom of God, not human ability, because our abilities will fool us. Hear me say this. It will fool you. It will trick you. It will deceive you. It may even manipulate you. So what Solomon is saying to his son and what I'm saying to you, as we go into 2021, our trust really needs to be on God. Listen, 
said, not with some of our being, because I want you to hear what Solomon is saying right here. He's not saying to him just a portion, right? But with everything that he has that we need to trust in the Lord. And then look at what he still says in verse 5, right? Don't depend, listen to this, on human ability, right? Trust in the Lord, trust in godly wisdom. Listen to the bad part of that first point in verse 5. Don't lean or don't depend on human ability. So here's what it looks like in verse 5. Lean not to your own what? Understanding, okay? That Hebrew word for understanding is the Hebrew word bana, bina, and that word is at play here. And here's what the word, um, it, it can address either capacity or condition. When we are speaking of capacity, it speaks to the capacity for rational thought or inference or discrimination. I'll explain that. When speaking of condition, it speaks to the cognitive condition of someone who understands, right? So listen to this. Your intellect, your ability to perceive, your ability to think, your ability to make decisions, your, your cognitive skills to figure thing out, things out on your own. So here's what that means in the passage, right? When trust in God, our dependence should not be on our own cognitive skills as easy as that may be, nor should we rely on any human capacities or capabilities, we should depend fully on God. Now, it doesn't matter how smart you or I may be. It doesn't matter how much experience we may have in life. Understand with me, our heart is deceptive, and our hearts can cause us to think a certain way and to believe a certain thing is right. But what we've got to learn to do is to trust on God wholeheartedly, right? Means that we should not, as we move into 2021, and I know this is so contradictory or contrary to human nature because we naturally want to figure things out. We naturally want to do things that make sense. And sometimes, God, we need to understand Scripture when it says God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God's ways are not our ways. For as high is the heaven above the earth, so is God's thoughts different from ours. And we need to understand that, that when the text says to trust in the Lord with all our heart and don't lean on our own understanding, we have to develop a level of dependence on God. Now, our trust in God, let me illustrate this to you and go back to the introduction that I just gave you. Our trust in God should be similar to the trust that Zach had of his father. You remember that father's son, right, in our introduction. Here's what Zach's trust looked like. Zach's trust trusted his father so much that it caused him, listen to this, to do something as crazy as saying, Dad, catch me, listen, without, first of all, preparing his dad for what he was about to do. I want you to see that walk going about in the, in the cliffs. Here's Zach and his father walking in the cliffs, right? Zach takes one direction and he goes to a higher elevation and his father goes to the lower elevation and Zach sees his daddy off in the distance knowing his father's under him and here's what he does. He says, dad, catch me and he jumps without his father having opportunity to look up and having opportunity to prepare himself because he trusted, listen to this, that his daddy would do everything within his power to turn around and catch him in time. That's trust. That's trust in the Lord. And the question is, do I trust God like that? Do you trust God like that? Do we as a people trust God like that? And going into 2021, the call is to trust God in that manner. I'm reminded, I'm reminded of Abraham, and we're going to talk about this next week, so you don't want to miss next week's sermon, that here's God in Genesis 22, right? He says to Abraham, Abraham, take your only son, 
Isaac and then go offer him on a mountain in the region of Moriah. Watch this. Abraham's trust in God was deeper than that of Zach and his father. Abraham jumps off the cliff. That's what he does, right? He jumps off the cliff. He grabs the boy and he grabs, puts his bag together. And early the next morning, they set off to the mountain. And Ab everything in Abraham, based on his trust in God, was I'm going to offer I Isaac a sacrifice. Why? Because Abraham knew that his daddy would catch him. He knew that God would provide. Do we trust God like that? And can we, going into 21, trust God at that level that when he releases a word, we know it's the voice of God and we act and we move on that word? I'm telling you that as we enter 2020, 21, our human understanding will do us no good when it comes to the wisdom of heart of God. The heart will do what the heart is used to doing, deceive us, right? And here's what's going to happen. We're going to have a lot of hits and a lot of misses. But if we want to be consistent, right, um, we need to learn to trust God. It is not that we should not make plans. I am not telling you not to make plans. What I am saying is defer those plans to the wisdom of God. Hear me say that. It is not that I'm not saying that we shouldn't have strategic frameworks and we shouldn't have vision and we should not have goals and objectives for 2021. I am not saying that. What I am saying is submit all of that to the wisdom of God. So don't allow your plans, don't allow your goals, don't allow your objectives, don't allow everything that we said we're going to do, don't allow that to override the wisdom of God. Here's what trust in the Lord says. Listen to God first and set direction based on what God says. My concern for the church after reviewing 2021, we've got a faction of the church that it's as if we're not even paying attention to what God is saying. And let me go here. Our trust is in other places as opposed to being in the word of the Lord. And God is calling me to say to this church, at least the Restoration Christian Fellowship, and whoever is listening to me wherever you find yourself, do not Put your trust in man. Do not lean in your own understanding. Do not put your trust in governments. Do not lean on governments for your own understanding. Put your trust number one in the Lord. So hear me. Here's what the first point said, right? Trust the wisdom of God. That's number one. Not human ability. So here's verse five again. Trust in the Lord. What? With all your heart and what? Do not lean on your own understanding. Here's the second thing or the second lesson I believe Solomon wants us to take away from the text. Listen to this. Know God's ways for guidance in life. My goodness, let me say that again. Know God's ways for guidance in life. In life, I particularly like this movement because here's what verse six says, right? Here's verse six. In all your ways, do what? Acknowledge him. And the King James says, he will direct your path. I like the ESV. He will make straight your path, right? Or he will straighten out your path. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will straighten out your past. Listen, listen to Solomon instructing his son, right? Solomon is in his instruction to his son. He now adds the demand. Listen to this carefully. For entire exclusive commitment and exhaustive commitment. He, he doesn't say in some of your ways. You got to get this. He's not saying in some of the things you do. But here's what Solomon's saying, son, in all, you, you, you've got to hear him in every single thing that you do, son. Listen, on the playground, at work, 
at home. Lord, this is the part that convicts, convicts me, right? In, in how you entertain yourself, in what you watch, in the music you listen to, in the words that you speak, in your interpersonal interaction. Don't just on Sundays be a certain way, but then on Mondays you're something else. Here's what he's saying. Son, in all your ways, right, do what? Acknowledge him or acknowledge God. Let me slow down because I want y'all to get this because I want you to say to this to yourself in 2021. Self, in all our ways, come on, repeat after me. Say, self, in all my ways, I must acknowledge God. Now, let me take a second to go to dive just, just, just a little bit beneath, beneath the surface as we talk about trusting God because my concern is that most people, when we encounter this verse and we read, acknowledge God, here is how we read it. We read the term acknowledge in the sense of recognizing or being aware of God's presence in and around us, right, in making decisions in life. Let me illustrate. Let me illustrate. So, for example, if, if my wife is in the room, I walk into the room, and here's what they will say to me, you need to acknowledge your wife. Meaning, and what people are really saying to me, is recognize her presence, right? So, I spent several years in the military. If you were in the military, and you walked into a room, and there was an officer in the room, here is how you acknowledge the officer. You acknowledge their presence by standing at attention and saluting. And you don't put that arm down until the officer salutes you back, then you're able to put it down. And, and when we read the text, we read it to the same vein. Wherever we are, salute God and acknowledge the presence of God. But hear me, hear me. Solomon is not saying that so much at the bottom of what he's saying. Solomon is diving a little deeper. Here's this. That word acknowledge in the Hebrew is the Hebrew root yada. And it means to perceive. It means to acquire knowledge. Hear this. It means to know. It means to get acquainted with, right? What is being expressed in the passage is, is, is that you don't just recognize God's presence, but listen to this. Son, Solomon is saying to his son, have you an intimate relationship with God. Listen to what he's saying. Yada is the Hebrew word. Know God. Have a working knowledge of God. Listen to this. Acknowledge him. Understand God, right? Know how God functions. Know the ways of God. Know the thought processes of God. Have a working knowledge of God. I just said that before. But learn to perceive, son, where God is working so as an individual you can be in alignment with God's plans. Listen to this. Know the ways of God, right? Here's what he's saying. Include God in your daily planning and activities. That's a lot deeper than just recognizing presence. Be intimate. Have a knowledge of. L let me help you on this. If I can go back to my illustration with Zach, right? Here's what that means with Zach and his daddy. Zach did not just acknowledge his daddy's presence and then he jumped. No, 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 no. Zach had an intimate relationship with God. He knew his dad would love him. He knew his dad would protect him. He knew something about his father that if he said, dad, catch me, that his daddy would not allow anything on the face of the earth to prevent him from trying to find the sound of where that voice was coming from and to es establish a sense of urgency and to find Zach. And, and even if he had to drop what he was doing and stop the world, there was, Zach knew that everything in his father would exert all the energies that were necessary, that would exert everything he needed to do to catch his son to guarantee that his son would not hit the ground. That's a lot deeper than recognizing the presence. And where I'm going with this, here's what Solomon is saying to us in 20 and 21. Don't just acknowledge the presence of God. Don't just salute God, but know God. Know God in such a way that when you say, Daddy, 
catch me. You got to hear me say this, that God is going to release all the forces of heaven to provide for you. Lord Jesus, I'm getting excited about this, that the trust of God, just like Abraham had with God, that when God say to you, offer Isaac, and I'm going to talk about this again next week, you will stop everything you're doing to go do what God said. We are going to be in complete alignment with God. That is a completely different level of trust. Listen, we trust him for provision. You're not hearing me. We, we trust him for protection. Come on. We trust him for guidance. You're not hearing me this morning. We trust him for sustenance. We trust him. I said this, but I'm going to say it again for daily provision. We trust him to wake us up in the morning. We trust him for protection from COVID. We trust him for money when we don't know where money's going to come from. We trust him to guarantee that the rent is going to be paid. We trust him. That's a different level of trust. Because here's what he says, don't lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on, on, on human wisdom. Trust the Lord. And a lot of us are making the mistake of trusting government for stimulus checks. And God is saying, trust me instead. And as we go into 2021, hear me, hear me, hear me. If we want to make it, if we want to be the people that God has called us to do, we trust him. And here's the latter part. And he will make your path straight. I'm going to say it this way based on the illustration. If you trust God, I'm guaranteeing you, he will catch you. <laughs> he will catch you. Where we might go down the curvy path and do all the crazy things that we do. When we trust God, I am standing on this first Sunday, January 3rd, of 2021 to let you know God will catch you. And the word of the Lord that the Lord laid on my heart to say to you this morning, as we go into 2021, develop a relationship with God that's a trusting one, where we trust him for everything. We trust him for healing. We trust him for provision, even though we can't come together for corporate worship, we trust him to keep the body together. Now we do our part. We don't lean on our own understanding, but we trust God. And some of the things that God will call us to do, it's going to go against human norms and human tradition. But body of Christ, listen to me. God is saying, trust him. And if we can trust him like that, here's what I'm going to say. I am guaranteeing you that God will catch you. Let me pray for you this morning. And if you've been listening to this word and maybe you're struggling with trust, maybe you're struggling with obeying God, you're struggling with knowing God like that. All it takes is you giving your heart to God. And maybe your call this first Sunday of the year is like, I've been doing things wrong. I've been doing it myself. I've been doing it on my own. I've been doing it with my own human understanding. And I hear the word of the Lord. I need to learn to trust God. It begins with a surrender. All you've got to do is surrender your heart to him and say, Lord, I realize I failed you. Come into my life and save me. And hear me, people. God will come into your life and he will save you. I want to pray with you this morning. And I want to invite you, if you don't know God, to pray with me to invite Christ. And after you've done that, be it in the chat, be it grab a phone number, call 867-770. Call our church. We'll be there for you. Talk on that. Go to our website, rcfministries.org. If you're on Facebook, just say, hey, I need prayer. If you are on YouTube, wherever you find yourself, our team is strategically positioned to respond to you. And I'm telling you, somebody will. Let us pray this morning. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your word. I thank you for what you're doing on the beginning of 2021, God. We want to trust you. We want to trust you like that, God. So teach us. So for that person that have not said yet to you, God, all they've got to say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my life and save me. And God, you will go into their life and save them. So as your word has been released this morning, teach us to trust you at another level, knowing that you will catch us. And God, for those of us that you've caught, thank you for the times that you have caught us. And we didn't even say, hey, daddy, Catch me, but yet and still, you caught us in spite of us. So as we begin this year, God, we're going to trust you. 
We're going to depend on you. We give, give our hearts to you that you get the glory. It is in your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen.